All right, in a product. So at the end of last lecture, we came to the realization that if we come up with some operation that takes two vectors as, as inputs and produces a number, as long as that operation satisfies these three axioms, then it can be used as an effective inner product, which parallels the concept of the dot product for geometric vectors. But I will highlight over and over again how the concept, how this really flips the concept on its head. For geometric vectors, the primary concepts are length and angles. And from that, you define the inner product. And then, when you generalize it to fit in this one of the broadest subjects in mathematics, that is linear algebra, the inner product comes first. And what is it? It's anything that has these three properties. And then from this, you define lengths. And from this, you define angles. And uh, I never wrote the definition of the angle, but it's, you know, it's the thing with the arc cosine in it. When I have an opportune moment, I'll write it down. So what we always do in this case, we start going through examples. And the, all of the good examples come when they come in threes, one from every uh, type of vector, from geometric vectors to, uh, to polynomials to vectors in Rn. And they're all examples. They're all equal in a product. What makes one in a product better than another is, is only the context of a particular problem. And the problem typically dictates what the best inner product is. So we'll see examples of that. And maybe for the time being, you will think this is artificial. This is mathy in the sense that it's math for its own sake. So, so you came up with these. OK, I can accept these. Now you're giving me examples. They seem arbitrary. You're just doing math exercise. And all of that may seem true until we start doing examples. And they're glorious examples with functions. One of them is Gaussian integration, which is just a miraculous thing until you see the linear algebra behind it. And then it becomes still an amazing thing. Your admiration for Gauss grows immeasurably, because I would not have thought of it. And uh, Fourier series. So the first example is geometric vectors. This will be an exercise in what I advocate uh, ceaselessly. Is that the right word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, treat all objects on their own terms. Treat all objects on their own terms, which means that when we're talking about geometric vectors, we're allowed to talk about their lengths and angles and all of the other geometric aspects. And from those to define a and in a product. It will be very anticlimactic in just a moment. Then when we switch to talking about polynomials, you have to talk about polynomial things. What can you do with polynomials? You can graph them, evaluate them. Can you evaluate a polynomial? Take a derivative, can integrate them, find their roots. Those are the sorts of things that you can do with polynomials. So you're allowed to use those ingredients and only those ingredients to define in a product. What can you do with elements in Rn, triplets or n-tuples of numbers. You can only do things with their entries. You can say multiply their entries, add their entries. You can just access the entries if you're a computer scientist. That's all you can do, access the entries. And so from that almost nothing, you're required to define an inner product. So we'll start by writing out a few things that are inner products, and then uh, I will give you a few examples of operations that technically qualify as candidates. And to qualify as a candidate, you have to take two vectors in an, as an input and produce a number as an output. But in one way or another, they will fail to be in a product. In other words, they will not satisfy one of these axioms. Uh, this one being the most interesting. So you have no idea how much time we'll spend with this one. The, Something that seems like an, almost like an afterthought, not an afterthought, but something that we had to throw in for sanity's sake, actually ends up being the most interesting of them all. So 
let's just dismiss geometric vectors. Uh, when it comes to geometric vectors, there is really only one reasonable definition of the inner product. And it's the length of one times the length of the other times the angle between them. Okay, so it used to be the dot product. Then it became an inspiration for inner products. But now we have to turn around and ask ourselves, well, does it actually satisfy these axioms? And this one, it obviously does. This one, it does even though it's opposite of obvious. It's completely not obvious. Remember we talked about it? And you'll find a video on Lemma that proves that this is satisfied. And then clearly this one is satisfied as well. Because when you dot a vector with itself and it's a non-zero vector, the comment that I made off camera is that this last condition, the positive definiteness condition, is good in that it use, has the symbol zero in it twice, but it stands for two different type objects. This is zero the number, and this is zero the vector. In any case, if you take a non-zero vector and you dot it with itself, you just get its length squared because it's cosine of zero, and that's a positive number for all non-zero vectors. So not only is this the dot product, it's also an inner product. Is there another definition in the world of geometry? Well, you can surely come up with one. You can surely come up with infinitely many of them. But I actually think it would be confusing if you did anything other than this. Sometimes, depending on what units you use, whether it's meters or kilometers or miles, you might want to put a one big coefficient in front of the whole thing and say that a thousand times this is the inner product. But it's really the only one that's ever used in applications, or I'll just say the only one that I've ever used in applications. I think it would be confusing to use another because then the word length becomes, loses its unique meaning. Right now the word length here means tape measure length. You take out the tape measure, you measure the vector, that's your length. And if you measure length through the inner product, Right? square root of the inner product with itself, well, you'll get back the same length. And it's consistent. But if you use the totally different inner product, if you got really creative, and you said something like, reflect one of the vectors, and then evaluate this, that's, that would actually be a, a pretty good one. Would it? I'll think about it. <laughs> uh, you might, it might violate this, but it will actually survive the other two but something like that. You could get creative and, said, you know, and say, reflect A and then evaluate this combination. That would be something that actually satisfies these two axioms. It'll fail this one. Yes, it will. But, but if you could be creative and, and get something, find something that satisfies all three, I can give you an infinite number of ways of doing it. Uh, you will now have two different lengths, one that you measure with a tape measure and the other one that you would measure in the in linear algebra sense, and there would be a mismatch, and you would not want that. So let's just say it's the only one that's practically in use for geometric vectors. <laughs>